The Holy Gospel according to John, the 11th chapter. Lord. All right, I don't want you to get spoiled about this, but it's another really long reading. And because I like you, I'd like for you to sit down and be comfortable. But it's okay. Soon we'll go back to short readings and conclude this day. Now, a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard that he said, this illness does not lead to death, rather it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his own death but they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into this world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and he is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were there with in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because it has been four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. 
And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, his face wrapped in a cloth. And Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what he had done. The Gospel of the Lord. Thank you. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Have you seen it? Have you seen it? I have. Have you seen it? Hmm. I spent a lot of years living in Florida where we really didn't see it. In fact, many people around here go to Florida just because things usually look about the same all year round. Palm trees, beaches, and the constancy of the surf that wants to go right now. <laughs> the first year that we were in Iowa for seminary, I really, really noticed it. Friday, I spoke with a gentleman as we slogged our way towards our vehicles at the grocery store. It was raining and windy and it was cold. And the man said to me, February sure was a good month for weather, wasn't it? <laughs> I had to agree. But even the rain, the cool temperatures, and the folks grumbling about the weather can't hide what I see, how I feel. I have hope. Have you seen it? Have you seen it? Have you? Have you? It's spring. <laughs> I've watched the birds return out the back window from our apartment, Mr. and Mrs. Robin, hanging out together. Tiny sparrows on the tree branches whose chirps are bigger than their bodies will ever be. Plants and flowers emerging from the ground, some that were tricked by the early February warmth, maybe having a rough time, but others who wisely waited for a little bit longer, coming out. And spring is a time of hope, especially for folks like me who long for sunshine and greenery and an excuse to wear shorts outside. And for the record, I've already worn shorts outside this year. I make it through winter because I have hope that spring will come once again. And spring does not disappoint me. It's a new thing. New life rushes into our world to greet us. If we pay attention, we can even see it happening before our eyes. Hope and new life are themes for our readings this morning. The Revised Common Lectionary, the readings that we use, often have a thread that connects them one to the other. And if you pay close attention, you can see what it is. But today, there's a giant rope that connects all the readings. I mean, like one of those big ropes like they have on ships to hold them up to a dock. Are you with me? The reading from Ezekiel offers a valley filled with dry bones, death, and a question. Mortal, can these dry bones live? The people of Israel have been in captivity in Babylon. At best, they hear stories, maybe little snippets about their homeland. And the leaders that are with them may have lost hope for themselves because they haven't been doing a particularly good job of inspiring the people. Ezekiel's prophetic words offer a new hope that even as they are at their lowest, even as these people in captivity are at their driest, away from their homeland, God can still bring new life, new breath, and even restore life to dry bones. Psalm 130 tells us about one in the midst of a storm of life. Out of the depths they cry, out of their suffering they cry, out of their loss they cry, out of their understanding of their own sinfulness they cry. 
For the psalm is a virtual confession and forgiveness, a plea for that new life. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning, and the morning brings a new day, and the new day brings new hope and redemption and new life and resurrection. Romans 8 is a warning to stay focused on new life in Christ and pay attention to the Spirit. Turn away from your need to be in charge. Turn away from your need to be in control. Turn away from your hope in human things and turn toward God. Again, a promise of new life and resurrection. If the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal body. And now for the big one. For the Jewish leaders, Jesus has raised a lot of eyebrows already. I'm sure he's been a topic of a lot of side conversations around the gym or at the water cooler or perhaps the coffee maker. And in John's Gospel, we get the word pretty clearly that Jesus is a kind of a rebel. A guy who's willing to heal on the Sabbath day and break Sabbath laws. Now there are religious leaders gathered at the home of Lazarus, Mary, and Martha to mourn with the two women. During Lent, we've been walking through the stories of Jesus' ministry. We've accompanied the disciples as they followed Jesus. We've been granted special insight because of our perspective on reading Scripture. We know that Jesus' ministry and teaching and healing is all leading up to the coming days. Next Sunday is Palm Sunday. And we'll gladly add our cheers and our voices to the acclamations of a Jesus who enters triumphantly into Jerusalem. But then just as quickly, we'll add our voices to the story of his betrayal, his trial, and ultimately his death, as we recall the Passion. On Monday Thursday, we will live together in the Last Supper, even as we celebrate with our children who receive communion for the first time. On Good Friday, we'll read the narrative of the cross and we'll dim the lights in the sanctuary and listen through the silence for nails being pounded in the cross. The story of Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead, at least for John's Gospel, is the catalyst for Jesus' own death. Jesus foretells his death early in the Gospel reading today, but the disciples misunderstand but Jesus will show them something that will, that should solidify their faith. Lazarus is dead, Jesus says. For your sake, I'm glad I wasn't there, so that you may believe. And so Jesus and his disciples head to Bethany, just two miles outside of Jerusalem. And Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead and commands those around him to unbind him. Take off the wrappings from his burial. In the verses that follow, we hear that many of the Jewish leaders come to believe because of this, and yet we also hear there are others who return to Jerusalem to tell what Jesus has done. So here's my paraphrased shout out to our very own Pastor Frombach, who yesterday at our council retreat challenged me to make the sermon one line long. <laughs> There is literally no place Lazarus can go to escape Jesus' love, not even death. Now, if it was up to him, I would have said amen and sat down. But I can't stop there. It's resurrection in its most literal form. It's new life. New life for Lazarus because of what Jesus has done, because of the love of Jesus for him. Hope for many who watched and saw that death did not have the last word where Jesus was involved. None of us probably has witnessed Jesus raising our loved ones from the grave. I heard this week that a headstone on the grave doesn't mark death, but it points to a life lived. And I would add to that that it points for Christians to a life that will be lived. And I can't help but wonder how my faith or your faith might have been influenced, how we might have been impacted by witnessing Jesus raising Lazarus to new life. And yet, 
We too are witnesses to that very thing. We are witnesses to that very thing as we relive and we tell this story together. The people in our readings this week have held on to something of this world. They have clung to despair and to death, and they've seen or have chosen death over clinging to their own need to control things. Jesus invites them, invites you to focus on life, to cling to life. Focus on new life, new hope, resurrection. Unbind the burial cloths that cling to your wounds and release your focus on death and breathe in the new life from what Jesus Christ has done for you. Have you seen it? The man. Now he nods, yes. There is new life all around us as we enter into spring. There is new life all around us that is sprinkled in the waters of baptism right back there. There is new life that is fed from the food that comes from this table. And this promise of resurrection and new life that we hear today that begins all the way back with Ezekiel, and comes through John's Gospel, this promise of new life, this promise of resurrection, comes right to us, in this place, right now, in this moment. At Lord of Life Lutheran Church, there is hope. There is new life for us in Jesus Christ.